Maccabeem Shelishi, 3 Maccabees 4. Wherever this decree was received, the people kept up a revelry of joy and shouting, as if their long pent up, hardened hatred were now to show itself openly. The Yahudim suffered great throes of sorrow and wept much while their hearts, all things around being lamentable, were set on fire as they bewailed the sudden destruction which was decreed against them. What home or city or place at all inhabited, or what streets were there which their condition did not fill with wailing and lamentation, they went, rather, they were sent out unanimous, rather, they were sent out unanimously by the generals in the several cities with such stern and pitiless feeling that the exceptional nature of the infliction moved even some of their enemies these influenced by certain sentiments of common man and reflecting upon the uncertain issue of life shed tears at this their miserable or rather, their miserable expulsion. A multitude of aged, gray-haired old men were driven along with halting, bending feet, urged onward by the impulse of a violent, shameless force to quick speed. Girls who had entered the bridal chamber quite lately to enjoy the partnership of marriage exchanged pleasure for misery and with dust scattered upon their myrrh anointed heads were hurried along unveiled and in the midst of outlandish insults set up with one accord a lamentable cry in lieu of the marriage hymn bound and exposed to public gaze they were hurried violently on board ship the men of these, in the prime of their youthful vigor, instead of crowns, wore halters round their necks. Instead of feasting and youthful jollity, spent the rest of their nuptial days in wailings and saw only Sheol at hand. They were dragged along by unyielding chains like wild beasts. Of these, some had their necks thrust into the benches of the rowers, while the feet of others were enclosed in hard fetters. The planks of the deck above them bared out, rather barred out the light, and shut out the day on every side, so that they might be treated like traitors during the whole voyage. They were conveyed accordingly in this vessel, and at the end of it arrived at Skidia, the king had ordered them to be cast into the vast hippodrome which was built in front of the city. This place was well adapted by its situation to expose them to the gaze of all comers into the city and of those who went from the city into the country. Thus, they could hold no communication with his forces, nay, were deemed unworthy of any civilized accommodation. When this was done, the king, hearing that their brethren in the city often went out and lamented the melancholy distress of these victims, was full of rage and commanded that they should be carefully subjected to the same, and not one wilt milder treatment, rather, and not one whit milder treatment. The whole nation was now to be registered. Every individual was to be specified by name, not for that hard servitude of labor, which we have a little before mentioned, but that he might expose them to the before mentioned tortures, and finally, in the short space of a day, might extirpate them by his cruelties. The registering of these men was carried on cruelly zealously, assiduously, from the rising of the sun to its going down, and was not brought to an end in forty days.
The king was filled with great and constant joy and celebrated banquets before the temple idols, his erring heart far from the truth and his profane mouth gave glory to idols, deaf and incapable of speaking or abiding, and uttered unworthy speech against the great Elohim. At the end of the above-mentioned interval of time, the registrars brought word to the king that the multitude of the Yahudim was too great for registration. Inasmuch as there were many still left in the land, of whom some were in inhabited houses, and others were scattered about in various places, so that all the commanders in Mitzrayim were insufficient for the work. The king threatened them and charged them with taking bribes in order to contrive the escapes of the Yahudim, but was clearly convinced of the truth of what had been said. They said and proved that paper and pens had failed them for the carrying out of their purpose. Now this was an act of interference, rather, interference of the unconquerable providence which assisted the Yahudim from heaven 